The US Air Force periodically gives out mission-capable rates for its aircraft. Year-to-year -year numbers for particular types of planes can be compared and their availability can be assessed. For 2021, not only are the rates worse than last year's, but there's a noticeable negative trend when comparing them to an even earlier period. Why does it matter? Watch the video to find out. Successful military ops often depend on secure communications, which is why this video is sponsored by NordVPN, a virtual private network app. What it does is exactly that, it ensures your internet connection is secure and very well encrypted using military-grade AES 256-bit encryption. Not only will no one be able to read your emails and look at the files you might be sending or receiving, but you, the user, will get to pick and choose from where to connect to the internet. NordVPN can connect you through any of their 5100 servers in 60 countries. It's easy to use, you can even enable auto-connect for a zero-click protection. It's amazingly fast, confirmed by speed tests, and it's available for every major platform. You can use it on your iPhone, Android device, including your Android TV, macOS, Windows computer, and even Linux. So go to nordvpn.com slash binkov and get a two-year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. Just enter the code binkov and connect through any country you want, securely. Back to our video now. What are mission-capable rates? Well, a plane after its maintenance check is finished is deemed ready for mission. It can either fly and perform its mission, or it can be on standby, sitting parked at an airbase. Checks are periodically made and not all planes always pass those checks. Some need maintenance, or some are sent away for upgrades under a planned schedule. Those planes then spend time marked as unavailable. During the year when one compares the time when a plane was marked as unavailable with the time the plane was available, one gets a figure which represents the mission-capable rate. How much time, percentage-wise, was the plane unavailable out of total time? There was a period back in the 1990s and even 2000s when the backbone of the US fighter fleet had those mission-capable rates in the 80% brackets. 2000s already saw the figures slip a little. The F-22 was brand new then. New and complex systems always have teething problems, so low availability was not unexpected. A-10s were old and unmodernized, not refurbished yet. The rest of the fleet still did okay. But let's look at the history of mission-capable rates in more recent years. What's apparent is that figures kept dropping for all plane types. The A-10 is not a fighter really, but an attack aircraft with a fairly simple flight envelope not subject to too much flight stress. The A-10 fleet also went through a thorough modernization and a refurbishment, even getting completely new wings. So it's doing okay. Its latest figure for 2021 is actually an uptick over the previous year, even though the plane has seen slightly better days in earlier years. All other types, however, are keeping up the negative trend. Their mission-capable rates slid down from 2020. And while there were some good years as well recently, the overall trend, when viewed since 2014, and especially since 2007, paints a fairly grim picture. F-16s and F-15s are doing okay-ish, but given that they still slid by 10 percentage points, it's impossible to say they're doing well. Basically, if they were ready to do, say, 250 sorties during a war scenario within a year in 2007, Today, they would be ready to do slightly under 220 sorties in a war. F-15E, the ground strike variant of the Eagle, is doing similarly bad. The F-35A is quite new. As said, new planes always start off with poor mission-capable rates. The F-22, for example, had its starting rate in 2004 of just 62%. That figure went on a seesaw during the next 10 years, but slowly crept up to over 70% in 2014. But the F-22 is a hugely complex aircraft, with a bunch of subsystems that were ahead of its time really. And now we're seeing the price of being cutting edge. Where the F-35 has benefited from the know-how, how to design and maintain stealth and various advanced subsystems, the F-22 is a technological orphan. Its fleet is low in numbers, it's expensive to make spares for it, and expensive to maintain its old tech stealth coating. And the mission-capable rates have been dropping quite steeply. Part of the reason is modernization too, meaning planned unavailability of part of the fleet. But a good part of modernization is yet to come. 
This November, the Air Force signed a 10 billion modernization and support contract for F-22 until 2031. So in a sense, it's little wonder that the Air Force is planning to get rid of the F-22s fairly soon, during the 2030s, but Binkov talked more about that in some of his previous videos. F-35A's rates are going slightly up. Bigger variations are normal when the fleet is small, as small changes and fixes to the fleet that were done to the F-35 could affect the entire fleet within just a year or two. As the F-35 fleet grows, it's likely the mission-capable rate will be more steady and eventually find itself firmly in the 70% range. Will it ever cross into the 80% bracket is unknown. That figure is something the US Air Force has publicly demanded in the past, both for the F-35 and as an average for the rest of its planes. But that was a few years ago. Last year, Air Force General Charles Brown said that figure is no longer a benchmark. Every local commander will be able to set their own goal, lowering the bar. The thing is, the F-35 is a complex machine, more so than F-15 or F-16, and with more subsystems that are crucial to its mission, there is more stuff that can go wrong, so in a sense it's natural that the F-35 will not be able to fully reach the mission-capable rates the F-16s had back in the 1990s, for example. What the F-35A has going for it is fairly young age. Its fleet is only 4 years old on average. It's gonna take a few decades until the mission-capable rates start dropping due to old age. Which is what's happening with the legacy platforms, such as F-16s and F-15s. Every plane has similar issues. Their availability rates follow a curve. Now, are those 2021 figures really bad? Well, they're worse than they were a decade ago. But are other countries doing better? That's a bit hard to say, because A, some countries use different standards calculating mission availability, and B, a lot of countries' air forces do not even report their figures. But perhaps it's reassuring for the US Air Force that the Rafale aircraft fleet serving in the French Air Force had even worse rates recently, or that the Eurofighter Typhoon fleet serving in the Royal Air Force had a somewhat similar rate. Now, what most people would be interested in is mission-capable rates in Russian or Chinese air forces. Sadly, those are not really published. But they can be estimated to a degree. Big factors going into the rates are age of a plane, complexity of a plane, and the budget is another. How much money there is, are there enough maintenance crews, are there enough spares bought and stored? And for two of those big factors, China is likely ahead of the US Air Force. Its budget has been surging in the past decades. While smaller than the US budget, it has fewer aircraft, so money per plane could easily be more plentiful. Chinese flight hours per year have been going up, meaning there's evidently more money for training and flying more frequently. At the same time, flight hours in the US Air Force have been dropping during the last 10 or so years. So it's plausible to assume that the Chinese Air Force is investing more in training hours of their pilots than it did before. And if that's true, then it's also plausible to assume there is enough money to keep those planes flying a lot. The other metric, fleet age, doesn't have to be assumed nor estimated. The US Air Force has quite old fighter jets on average. The F-35 being procured is helping, but it will take a while until the average age figures change. Now let us compare those figures with the Chinese fleet. China has been procuring new fourth generation jets at an increasing pace for two decades now. Their J-7 fighters are old, but they're dwindling in numbers fast, and will likely be completely retired in a few years. Their J-10s and J-11s are on the average much younger than the US planes. So it's quite plausible that such a young fleet has less issues being maintained. Certain types like J-20 might still fare badly, due to reasons which made F-22 and F-35 yield bad availability rates. But J-10s and flankers are known quantities iterative and mature designs, and those types make up two-thirds of Chinese tactical jets in total. So to put everything in context, a plane is only as good as its presence on the battlefield. If it's farther away from the battlefield than the enemy's planes are, then there's gonna be less time spent over the battlefield. If its maintenance woes mean it spends more time in depots than the enemy's plane, then there's gonna be even fewer planes spending even less time over the battlefield. So ultimately, even a force that's got 50% more planes on paper could find itself outnumbered locally when and where it actually matters. 
mission capable rates are a small cog in the overall system, but they are a long-term indicator, and they're not painting a pretty picture.